Hello everybody, Peter of England. Today I'd like to talk to you about the Bills of Exchange Act 1882, Section 68, Pay for Honour Supra Protest, uh, or as I term it, Good Samaritan Intervention Payment Drafts, which I've mentioned to you on previous videos. For those people who are unaware of the offer, please just go back uh, on, the, uh, on the channel and you can say or see that I offered to pay the debts uh, of people no matter where they were in the world and I would pay them out of my own uh, account. Now, why I want to mention or what I want to mention on this video today is just to bring to your attention that there is a, a triple pronged adversarial attack that we are waging on the system with these payment drafts and not just something being tendered or offered to the creditor in return for him doing something for you. Uh, the bedrock, the basis that underlies the Section 68 Payer for Honor Supra protest uh, drafts is the 1944 Bretton Woods Agreement when the global sovereign nations were huddled together in Bretton Woods in the United States and coerced, bullied, threatened, intimidated, bribed and promised certain financial and uh, should we say um, uh, uh, sovereign benefits in return for them all collectively agreeing to come along and sort out what was called the, the rebuilding of the peace post World War II. Now that point is is, is imperative that you understand that the Section 68 interventions are based upon that because from that point forward, society, finance, commerce was not as it was before. You, from that point, were lied to. Now, it may be that it didn't matter that you were lied to, but it was the continuous subterfuge, the continuous hiding of these facts over time that has led to the, the crisis that we find today. There is no honesty in society. There is no rule of law. Everything that your grandparents thought was true, it wasn't. What your parents taught you and inculcated into you, your teachers, your priests, and uh, the, the authoritarian figures that patrol and police your world, have all been lying to you primarily because they were all juiced in on the deal. So the keeper of the gateway, the choke point of most of these uh, incursions that you are going to make now is when the creditor comes along and maybe says to you, they're not prepared to accept the Section 68 offer, um, they can't process it, it's worthless, um, they will not allow you a third party intervention, which is totally contrary to all the, uh, the commercial necessities that they're allowed to uh, uh, have uh, operating on their behalf, because the, the banks are the politics. The banks pay the judges. The banks pay for the corporatocracy. The banks fund everything. And so it is the bankers at the very top of this, this pyramid that are calling the shots. It's the bankers that arrange Bretton Woods. It's the bankers that put the adhesion contracts onto you. It's the bankers that force you to pay the, uh, the interest on every single fractional reserve note that is minted or processed. And so we get to a point where if you're going to court, and I suggest you don't, no matter what, you use the various documents like sacrament, um, the Lazarus taxon and the Skyhook document that are on the removement website, that you, you use those to formulate a very, very strong and effective and uh, inviolable defense. Because the defense for you is that you have not been told the truth. You have been lied to. Fraud, therefore, vitiates everything, ennuls it. And as you're coming now into a, an arena for equity, they must come with clean hands if you're coming with clean hands. So, 
the judge, I would suggest you say, judge, as far as I can see in this process or this case today, you're bent. You could then qualify it, not to make him too angry, by saying you're bent in one direction only. You are not impartial. You have taken an oath of office to the crown, to King Charles as he is now. You are not an impartial bystander independently reviewing matters. You're paid by the banks. The banks are the IMF. 143 countries, con sorry, 143 companies uh, control the world. Have a look at the work by uh, Glattfelder and Al from the Zurich Institute of, uh, of Finance. A few years ago, they did an, uh, an economic modeling program which showed all the companies in the world came back to 143 major interests where the directors, the chairman, the board of governors were all interlinked. And so what that means is that the judge and the Bar Association and the Law Society, they are patrolling this lie, the lie that has ensnared you. And so when you're looking to defend yourself here, you've got to, you've got to dig in on the, the knowledge and the foundation that it's either true what we're saying here or it's a complete lie and this video will will just you know be confined to the dustbin of YouTube uh, uninteresting uh, conversations. So that's the point you've got to come through. The barrister or the attorney or the paralegal whether you're in the United States or the United Kingdom representing you if that's what you were thinking. Tommy Robinson case in point do not think they're doing you any good at all. They are not. They have sworn an oath not to embarrass the court or the judge. The judge carries the weight of all the senior judges above him, from magistrates up to su uh, Supreme Court. And so what that means to you is that they are all in a line in the same club. And as they're in the same club, as I said, it is the bankers that are calling the shots. So I just really want to, to make sure you recognize the fact that the, the, main, the main message you need to convey, not only to the creditor, but then to the court, is a challenge. I'm not taking this anymore. I've had enough of it. I can understand that maybe you don't know about it. May you, maybe you can plead, um, a justifiable excuse through ignorance or non-informed consent but I'm maintaining now that you can't so I'm divorcing from you I'm divorcing from your contractual stances I'm divorcing from the trickery and from here on in what we're going to do is play it this way and the way you're playing it is with one of the section 68 drafts which are used as a, a, uh, a life belt that I've offered to put around you up until the point that you can control your arguments a little bit better and your defences as you maintain what's called uh, via a protective order or a special appearance, appearance through your paperwork in the court. So that's really the, 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 the uh, update and the overview of the section 68. From that, why would it be important that you start to do these things now and make an effort at this day and age to start preparing yourself for some financial heavy water or turbulence or maybe even a tsunami that's coming your way? Well, I'll tell you what, um, it's all to do with the World Economic Forum. Okay, let me tell you a little bit more of how it works and, but no, how it really works to give you an oversight of why you really need to get tough with the creditor corporations, which, as the Glattfelder study shows, five major head fund, head fund, hedge funds even in the world control the 143. And the 300 ruling families on the planet, which are connected through various bloodlines, are the principal agents 
that are the founders historically and have inherited these corporations. So the five repeatedly are uh, BlackRock, Berkshire, Vanguard, State Street and Fidelity. And these five horsemen of the apocalypse, as we might call them, own, I would say conservatively, 80% of all the top, if not 90% of the top branded names in the world that you know. That's from Nike to Adidas, through to um, Chrysler Motors, through CBN, CBS, Washington Post. So don't think Jeff Bezos or Elon Musk own anything. Zuckerberg, equally, they're all just front men for founding corporations. So there are the World Economic Forum up here who are making the policy decisions. They're putting that then into the banks, which are one and the same. And the banks then are operating the squeeze down the pyramid for the funding. OK, so let's look at the, the three main initiatives. Actually, there's probably four. One is called uh, CEI. That stands for the Central European Initiative of the World Economic Forum. Next one we've got is the ESG, which stands for the Environmental Social Governance Initiative. And the third one is, I think it's called, uh, what is it? Yeah, the DEI. All these are just nonsense, made up committee nonsenses. This one's called DEI, Diversity, Equity and Inclusion. So that's why they want to diversify and uh, through equity include you. But it's all nonsense because at the back of all that, underpinning it, underpegging it, is something called the digital ID, which they're rolling out now. Without the digital ID, you won't be able to go into a shop. You won't be able to fuel your car. You won't be able to put credit on your phone. You won't be able to use the internet, go on holiday, go on a plane, or go out of your 15-minute city. So if that type of thing is important to you, if that's the type of thing you want to avoid, I would suggest you listen up to the solution at the end of this, which is an, uh, something called Area 52. But let me just give you uh, an example at the moment of how the global communization and the demoralization of the world is taking place. So, as quickly as I can, in short, the corporations that you see out there seem to be running their corporations into the ground. Yeah, you've got companies like Bud Light, you've got Adidas, you've got Nike, you've got Starbucks. All of these people are getting onto the various LBQ whatever agenda. They're getting into the trans uh, agenda. They're getting into um, openly not commenting about the social uh, indifferences that are being created day by day by the neocon uh, Biden agenda, which is a globalist agenda. And so what you find is that people are thinking, well, this has all got to stop. Yeah, uh, they start putting all strange sort of uh, ads together, um, uh, referring to minority communities, won't allow you to speak or express yourself or speak out as you think fit because via coercion and systems of surveillance, they're monitoring every word you say and everything you do. So when you get to that point, you're in a bit of a, you're in a, bit of a clamshell. You're not allowed to express. And so what happens is, as these corporations take on these personas, they are abhorrent to the normal individual within Western Europe, the United States, the Commonwealth countries. And so what you find is, uh, very subversively, the people start to turn away from these companies. They tend to reject them. They reject their products, they reject their stock, they don't want to buy into them. But this is ideal because it plays directly into the World Economic Forum globalist agenda for the communization of the planet. Because what's happening here is these European values, these American values, these Commonwealth values for all these corporations are becoming toxic to the smell, the feel, the taste. And so what happens is, as the people turn away from them, 
the stock price collapses, or will start to, and so they make layoffs. They lay off the people. But it's not the people at the top of the corporate pyramid who are just uh, caretakers and CEOs for five years, but the people who are getting crushed are the, the red and blue families that are supplying the delivery drivers, the mechanics, the people who work in the warehouses. That's where all the damage gets done. And so what they're getting you to do is to collapse your own society by this process of a globalization of communism through demoralization. For those people who want to go a little bit deeper, look at some of the work by uh, the amazing documentary work, uh, filmmaker called Adam Curtis. Uh, Power of Nightmares is a very good one. Hypernormalization, and another one called Fuck You Buddy, which is a, a, a must see. So these highlight the methods of what's called the power of nightmare to frighten society into a social engineering uh, corridor that best serves the World Economic Forum agenda. And so all these so-called inclusion programs are not inclusive for you, they're sending you one way, and that's into oblivion. So just to make sure as I'm rolling all this uh, into one, uh, yeah, so that's the point I was, I was touching on, and I've clarified it more so in my, my notes. The, the Antifa, the Black Lives Matter, all these uh, peripheral social agendas are forced onto the corporations because if they don't play ball, they don't get any funding. And as the banks are taking the orders, and they are one and the same, from the World Economic Forum, then that's what happens. A small business doesn't have to rely on that and doesn't need that type of funding so much. But the large corporations controlled by the Five Horsemen and these other organizations, they have to play ball. And if they don't play ball, then there is trouble. They don't get the funding. So that's why they're prepared to run their businesses into the ground. That's what they did in COVID. They all came into step. No one complained, not one corporate uh, CEO or magnet of business or industry came out and condemned it for being a wreck of the economy and society. Why? It's too big a coincidence for not one of them to have said it or tried it or attempted it. And maybe one did, but it didn't get reported. So with that in mind, I'm coming up to now the, the, the final part here, which uh, is Yep, public are abandoning the corporations. Final part then, the conclusion is really what's left. What's left in your arsenal and how can you attempt to, to beat this? Well, there is a way. It's coming soon. It's called Area 52 X Terra, means beyond the earth. And with that, um, I, I'm not gonna go on to too much detail, but we're due to launch the website on uh, the um, it's right about the 21st of June, which is the summer solstice. So we've chosen that for a particular reason. Um, so if you want to escape the digital ID, if you want to escape the World Economic Forum and the dictates of the World Health Organization, if you want to free yourself and family and step out from the state by possibly becoming stateless, but then being included as a citizen in the newest state formed, on the planet, then that's something for you. It should be of interest. And uh, just wait for the, for the next video, which will probably be on that in around a week's time. So Peter of England saying, thank you very much for listening. Do the, the notification for future videos, press the like, and please pass this video on. And the offer there for all of you who are new to the channel is still there. Pick up your Section 68 um, Good Samaritan Intervention payment drafts and allow me to step, uh, step in to the breach and eradicate the debt for you. And with working together, we can come through it victoriously because we've got truth on our side and the lies can be dissolved. Okay, thank you.